So friends, today we will just study what is the meaning of damp oscillation. Now you have just seen that as far as the motion of simple pendulum is concerned, we know that when a pendulum is taken to one of its extreme position and it is released, then it will perform an oscillation about its mean position. Now here I have shown that during the oscillation of pendulum, how the displacement of that bob is varying with respect to that of time. Under the ideal condition, if air does not exert any viscous force on the bob of a simple pendulum or no frictional forces are produced at the point of contact, then ideally we can expect that this pendulum continues to oscillate about its mean position with the same amplitude of vibration and we will get such type of oscillation which are just repeated after a regular interval of time and there is no change in the amplitude of oscillation of a pendulum. It means that pendulum under the ideal condition it will perform periodic oscillation in which there is no change in the amplitude of oscillation. But in actual practice we know that whenever pendulum is released from the extreme position, pendulum is released from the extreme position, then what happens? As time goes, the amplitude of oscillation of pendulum goes on decreases and finally it becomes zero or we can say pendulum will die out. Why it is so? Because that pendulum or the bob of pendulum is acted upon by viscous force exerted by what? Air surrounding the pendulum will exert a viscous force on the bob of a pendulum at the same time frictional forces are produced at the same time some frictional forces are produced at the point of contact. And these external forces, as they help to reduce the amplitude of oscillation of pendulum, means in other words we can say that pendulum undergoes an oscillation, no doubt it is periodic oscillation, but the amplitude of oscillation goes up, decreases or we can say that pendulum undergoes damp oscillation. Pendulum undergoes what? Damp oscillation. So what do you mean by a damp oscillation? If amplitude of oscillation is reduced, if amplitude of oscillation is reduced with the help of external force, with the help of external force, then such an oscillations are called damp oscillation and that oscillator is called a damp oscillator. That oscillator is called damp oscillator. Now, what is a damp harmonic oscillator? Damp harmonic oscillator. Damp harmonic oscillator. So, a damp harmonic oscillator, it is a periodic oscillator. It is a periodic oscillator whose amplitude decreases gradually or any periodic oscillator of gradually decreasing amplitude is called damp harmonic oscillator and that oscillation is called damp harmonic oscillation. Any periodic oscillation of gradually decreasing amplitude, periodic oscillation of what? Gradually decreasing amplitude is called damp harmonic oscillations or that oscillator is called damp harmonic oscillator. Now, one of the examples of this damp harmonic oscillator, I have shown already that there is a block of mass M and a spring. This block spring arrangement, here block is attached to a spring and spring is attached to a rigid support. This system of block and spring along with a vein which is attached to the block with the help of a rod. Here there is a rod. So a vein is attached to a block 
with the help of this rod. So here we are having a complete system, and that system it works as damp harmonic oscillator. It works as what? Damp harmonic oscillator. Now see here how it will work. When I just pull the block in a downward direction through a small displacement x. When this block is moved in a downward direction through a small displacement x, then that block and release and release. Then that block will move vertically up and down. That block performs what? Up and down motion in a vertical direction. And because this vein is attached to a block with the help of rod, vein means bankya cha pata. पवन चक्की मध्य जो पात्र वारा पड़ो फिर पंख्यालिक्विड तो पानी मध्य बुड़े लिक्विड मध्य बुड़े एंड वेन वेर इज मुंग अप एंड डाउन देन दैट लिक्विड इन विच दैट वेर इज समर्स इट विल एक्सर्ट ए ड्रैग फोर्स ऑन ए वेन इट विल एक्सर्ट वॉट ए ड्रैग फोर्स ऑन ए वेन एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस ड्रैग फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय लिक्विड ऑन ए वेन देर इज एन इंक्रीज इन Thermal energy there is an increase in temperature of both vein as well as liquid. It means both vein and liquid they are gaining the thermal energy. But according to law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Simply, it can be converted from one form into the other form. So where from this vein and liquid they are gaining the thermal energy? Here there comes. A reduction or decrease in the mechanical energy of block and spring. So when block is moving up and down, vein is also moving up and down. Due to up and down motion of vein, liquid exerts a drag force on a vein, and due to which there is an increase in thermal energy both of vein as well as liquid. Means the mechanical energy there is a continuous loss in. Mechanical energy of block spring system, block spring system, and as a result of which there is a continuous reduction in the amplitude of vibration of this oscillator. It means this oscillator it works as simple harmonic oscillator. This oscillator is a perfect example of what simple or damp harmonic oscillator, damp harmonic oscillator. Now see here, as far as this block is concerned, this block is under the action of three forces. Block is under the action of three forces. One of the force is a damping force. One of the force is what? Damping force. And this damping force, which is acting on a block, it depends on the nature of surrounding medium. It depends on nature of surrounding medium. Means in other word, we can say. This damping force it depends on the speed of block or speed of vein because both of them they are attached with the help of rod. So whatever may be the speed of block, same is the speed of vein. So damping force it depends on the speed of block or a vein. Or damping force is equal to minus b into v, where b represent b represent Damping constant B is known as what? Damping constant and negative sign here it indicates that damping force will increase whenever damping force increases then the speed of block or vein it will decrease means damping force and speed they are opposite they are what? Opposite when one increases other will decrease now when block is moved in a downward direction and release. It performs oscillation. Why it is so? Because that spring is exerting a restoring force on the block. As we are moving the block through a small displacement x, then the restoring force acting on the block by the spring 
फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय स्प्रिंग ऑन ए ब्लॉक इट कैन रिटर्नेज माइनस के इन टू एक्स माइनस के इन टू एक्स वेयर के इज नोन एज स्प्रिंग कॉन्स्टेंट के इज नोन एज वॉट स्प्रिंग कॉन्स्टेंट सो दिस इज द सेकेंड फोर्स विच वे एक्ट ऑन ए ब्लॉक दैट इज फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय स्प्रिंग ऑन ए ब्लॉक दैट इज एफ एस इज इक्वल टू माइनस के इन टू एक्स अगेन निगेटिव साइड इंडिकेट फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट दे आर अपोजिटली डायरेक्टेड नाउ द थर्ड फोर्स विच इज एक्टिंग ऑन ए ब्लॉक is its weight itself weight if m is the mass of the block then mg represent weight of block and it is acting downward but if i just compare the weight of a block force exerted by or the gravitational force exerted on a block which is nothing but its weight it is negligible in comparison with damping force and that of for force exerted by spring so the net force acting on a block Net force acting on a block. It is the sum of damping force and that of force exerted by a spring. According to Newton's second law of motion, if F is the force, net force acting on a block of mass m, and that block is moving with an acceleration a, then force F is equal to m into a. M is the mass of block and a is the acceleration produced in the block. And that is equal to minus of now F D is what minus of B into V and F S is again minus of K into X minus of K into X. Now as we know, acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity. Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity. Velocity is nothing but rate of change of displacement. Now put the value of velocity over here. So this is d dt of dx by dt, or we can say acceleration is nothing but d two x by dt square. Means this expression will now become m into d two x by dt square equal to minus b into again b is equal to what dx by dt. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So minus b into dx by dt minus k into x. Now I can collect all the terms on one side, and I will write the expression for differential equation for damp harmonic oscillator. So here the equation will be terms m into d2 x by dt square. Now minus b dx by dt it becomes plus b dx by dt. And plus k into x is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. This is a simple linear differential equation of order two, and it has a solution. The solution of this differential equation. This is the differential equation which is used to represent damped harmonic oscillation. Damped harmonic oscillation, and the solution of this equation. Is given by x is equal to a into e raised to minus b t upon 2 m into cos of omega dash t plus phi. At your level, you have to simply remember that whenever you are having differential equation of this type, then its solution is given by x is equal to a e raised to minus b t upon 2 m cos of omega dash t. Plus that of phi. Now here the term a into e raised to minus b t divided by 2 m. It represents the amplitude of damped harmonic oscillators. Amplitude of what? Damped harmonic oscillation. And here I have just drawn the graph. Displacement against time. Means how the amplitude of vibration of this wave or amplitude of vibration of this block is varying. Here it is continuously decreasing. And from the graph, what we can say, amplitude of oscillation, it decreases exponentially. Exponential decay. This curve is known as what? Exponential decay. Or this curve is known as what? Exponential rise. So as far as amplitude of Damped harmonic oscillators are concerned. Amplitude of damped harmonic oscillator goes on decreases exponentially, and is clear from this graph. 
where displacement is varying with respect to that of time. Again in the equation for displacement of damped harmonic oscillator, the presence of term cos omega dash t plus pi, it represents that the motion of damped harmonic oscillator is still a simple harmonic motion. Damped harmonic oscillator it performs what? Simple harmonic motion that is due to presence of the cos omega dash t plus pi. Here omega dash, purposely I have written angular frequency omega dash which is different than in case of linear simple harmonic motion. In case of linear simple harmonic motion we know that omega equal to k by m. But in case of damped harmonic oscillator, angular frequency omega dash is equal to under root of k by m minus of b by 2m whole square. b by 2m whole square. And the time period of time period of what? Damped harmonic oscillator t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega dash. Not omega d, omega dash or t is equal to 2 pi divided by under root of k by m minus of b by 2m whole square b by 2m whole square now we will see the last bit that is 5.15 free oscillation what are force oscillation and that of resonance now as we know that Whenever simple pendulum it is displaced from its stable equilibrium position and released, what happens? That pendulum it will oscillate about its mean position with a frequency equal to its natural frequency with a frequency equal to its what? Natural frequency given by formula L is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of G divided by L. So wherever or the motion of a body when it is displaced from its mean position and released so that it will oscillate with a frequency equal to its natural frequency, such oscillations they are called as free oscillations. Such oscillations they are called as free oscillations. Now the same pendulum, it can be made to oscillate with a frequency which is other than that of natural frequency. But the half of pendulum is, this pendulum is, इसको अगर हम एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स यहां अप्लाई करते हैं इफ आई अप्लाई पीरियोडिक फोर्स एक्सटर्नली इफ द सेम पेंडुलम इज एक्टेड अपॉन बाय सम एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स देन दैट पेंडुलम विल ऑसिलेट विद अ फ्रीक्वेंसी इक्वल टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ एक्सटर्नली अप्लाइड पीरियोडिक फोर्स means what pendulum which was initially oscillating with natural frequency n is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of g divided by l now the same pendulum is oscillating with a frequency n capital L which is same as that of frequency of externally applied periodic force so the vibration of pendulum are called as force oscillation vibration or oscillation so for force oscillation what is necessary when a body is oscillating under the action of externally applied periodic force with a frequency which is equal to the frequency of externally applied periodic force such oscillation or such vibrations they are called as a force oscillation they are called as what a force oscillation. Now here I have drawn some diagram. See here. In this diagram, I have shown four pendulum. 
pendulum A it is known as a driver pendulum while that of B, C and D they are called as driven pendula plural of pendulum is pendula plural of pendulum is what? pendula now as far as pendulum A and C are concerned both are of same length while that of Length of pendulum B is shorter and that of D is somewhat longer. D is somewhat longer. Now, as the natural frequency of pendulum, simple pendulum, it is given by formula N is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of G by L. Means frequency is inversely proportional to square root of length according to law of pendulum. So frequency is inversely proportional to square root of length. So as pendulum A and C, pendula A and C, they are of same length, their natural frequency will be same. As B is shorter, means length of pendulum B is small. Naturally, its a natural frequency is somewhat higher. As the length of pendulum D is large, L is large. So the natural frequency of pendulum D is shorter or smaller. So what I will do that pendulum A its bob is made up of its bob is what? It is a solid rubber ball. Why that of bob of pendulum B, C and D they are hollow rubber ball. Hollow rubber ball. Now if I just oscillate, if I just oscillate, this driver pendulum A in a plane which is perpendicular to the length of C, I may oscillate it in this manner. Pendulum A is allowed to oscillate in a plane perpendicular to the length of C. What I will observe after some time? After certain time, because that vibrational energy can transfer through the string, vibrational energy can be transferred through the string. All the three pendula B, C, and D, they also start vibrating in a plane which is parallel to the plane of vibration of pendula A. A is a driver pendula, while that of B, C, and D, they are what? Driven pendula. Now, as far as oscillation of pendulum A is concerned, when pendulum A is given oscillation naturally, it may oscillate with its natural frequency. Means, oscillation of pendulum A are free oscillation. And because oscillation of B, C, and D, all the three pendula B, C, and D, they start vibrating in a plane which is parallel to the plane of what? Pendula A. With a frequency same as that of frequency of pendula A. In other words, we can say pendula B, C and D as they are vibrating with a frequency same as that of frequency of externally applied periodic force. Hence, pendula B, C and D they are just performing force oscillation. Their oscillations are what? Force oscillation. Again, one more observation is there. That out of three pendula B, C and D, the amplitude of oscillation of pendula A, pendula C, if I just consider the amplitude of oscillation of pendula, pendulum C, amplitude of oscillation of pendulum C is greater than that of amplitude of oscillation of pendulum B and that of D. Pendulum C is of length same as that of length of pendula A and pendulum C is oscillating with maximum amplitude. It means we can say the oscillation of pendulum C is in resonance with A, is in resonance with A. Remember one thing, for resonance to occur, for resonance to occur, a certain condition must be applied. Remember that whenever, if I say N is the frequency of externally applied periodic force, means N is the frequency of pendula A. 
n small n it is the natural frequency of c natural frequency of c then the amplitude of vibration amplitude of vibration of pendula c it depends on it depends on what it depends on difference between the frequency of pendula a and pendula c amplitude of vibration is inversely proportional to difference between the frequency since here n is approximately equal to n so this amplitude is inversely proportional to zero means amplitude is maximum or that pendulum c undergoes oscillation pendulum c undergoes oscillation means if pendulum c is of length same as that of length of pendulum a it means their natural frequencies are same it means their natural frequencies are same and because c is vibrating with maximum amplitude it means maximum vibrational energy will be transferred from pendulum a to the pendulum c because c is having natural frequency same as that of a whereas pendulum b and pendulum d they will vibrate they will vibrate or they will oscillate in a plane parallel to the vibration parallel to the plane of vibration of a but their amplitude of vibration is somewhat smaller amplitude of vibration is somewhat smaller why it is somewhat smaller because difference between the two frequency is non zero means amplitude is smaller amplitude is inversely proportional to difference amplitude is inversely proportional to difference so remember as far as resonance is concerned resonance for resonance to occur a body must be acted upon by external periodic force such that the frequency of externally applied periodic force is same as that of natural frequency of a body natural frequency of a body under that condition that body will vibrate with maximum amplitude and we can say that resonance phenomena will occur resonance phenomena will occur now here we will plot a graph a graph of square of amplitude against the frequency square of amplitude against the frequency now that graph is of bell shaped curve and here i can write f is equal to fr it means when the natural frequency of pendulum c is same as that of frequency of what externally applied periodic force then the amplitude of vibration is maximum here amplitude is what maximum a max square whereas for pendulum b its frequency is higher than the frequency of a so difference between the two frequency will decide the amplitude of vibration as this difference goes on it increases amplitude of vibration goes on decreases whereas the length of pendulum c is greater than length of pendulum a means frequency natural frequency of d is greater than natural frequency of a hence the difference between the frequency of externally applied periodic force and the natural frequency of d if it is more smaller is the amplitude of vibration so as we move away means the difference between the two frequency goes on increases hence amplitude of vibration goes on decreases so this is all about the resonance phenomena